My next guest says AI is a revolutionary tool that will transform education and the next generation. Joining me now, America First Policy Institute Chair of Education Opportunity, Erica Donalds. Erica, thanks for coming in. You're using AI to actually take kids out of the classroom, which is no small endeavor. Tell us about what drove you to, per, to pursue VR enhanced learning and, and what these kids are actually getting to experience. Well, like most families, we needed school choice at a time. During COVID, we wanted to offer some high quality options. So parent demand is why we started this immersive learning company, Optima Ed, and the world's first virtual reality school, Optima Academy Online, where students can not just learn about ancient Rome, they can go there, they can go to the moon, they can be on the inside of a cell. But virtually, right? And instead of looking right? at a checkerboard of faces. Sorry? But virtually, right? That's right. They can do it virtually either from home as a, a at-home learner or even in a classroom. They can all put on VR headsets and magic school bus style. They can learn from wherever <laughs> they are learning about. I love that idea. But aren't you, I mean, so many of us concerned with criticism of AI as a means for students to cheat. Isn't it even easier in a virtual classroom? Well, that's why teachers and innovators are coming up with ways to combat cheating in AI, but instead use it to expand learning. For example, a teacher is having students write out their essay in front of them and then teaching the students how to ask AI, ask me questions about this topic to expand my learning. Um, using AI instead to foster creativity and bring better understanding as opposed to cheating, that's why we have to drive the use of AI and not let the students drive that use. Right. Uh, I know one big concern out there, kids' AI habits are outpacing mom and dad, right? Seven in 10 teens, according to new numbers, used generative AI last year, but 83% of parents said schools had not addressed it. What kind of guardrails should parents and schools be considering at this point? Well, schools like those here in Florida are already adopting policies that protect students. Uh, data privacy is the first thing. Uh, guardrails around filters, what is coming into the classroom if you're using a large language model. But better, creating small language models, subsets of data that students can interact with safely because we trust the information that is in them. Uh, and then, of course, parental rights, making sure that parents can see anything their children see. They can see the logs, and it's completely transparent to the people who care the most about their children. According to one report, children reported using AI for companionship 42% of the time. Does that worry you? This is nothing new. If you're my age, you, you use Teddy Ruxpin, right? That used to read us stories and that was your little friend. When my kids were little, it was these uh, lifelike puppies. So it's not new that students wanna interact with an imaginary friend, but it's important that we have safe applications for students to interact with and that those applications hopefully are educational, teaching kids how to read better, how to do math better. Parents need to know what is safe and that's why we can't just eliminate it altogether. We have to educate the parents and the students on how to use AI responsibly. Here in New York, the governor just signed a sweeping AI bill, a safety bill into law. White House AI czar David Sachs, though, warning if Republicans must unify behind President Trump's one rule book. Otherwise, New York and California will set the rules for the entire country. That's what he says. Who should be setting the precedent for AI regulations in America? Well, we just saw polling this morning as well from Tony Fabrizio that said the majority of voters think there should be a national standard to keep children safe on AI. Uh, I agree that it is gonna be very difficult for innovators to enter this space and for us to lead as a nation if we have a patchwork of regulations across the country with state legislators that sometimes don't even meet but every two years. The innovations are happening too quickly to rely on state legislators only. So I believe, I agree with David Sachs that we need a federal standard, especially when it comes to our student safety. But I also see teachers and school districts taking responsibility to put safeguards in place, extending their existing IT programs to protect our kids. Erica, thanks for being on with us. Good to see you.